Coming up, Boker blends the old with the new, a very special giveaway for everyone coming up, and we talk about Pical Knives. I'm Bob DeMarco. This is the Knife Junkie Podcast. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome back to the show. Uh, one of my favorite comments this past week was from Jim Landers. We were talking on Thursday Night Knives about how do knives fit into your self-defense uh, strategy. And this was uh, probably the, the, the best strategy right here. Jim Landers says, the best way to fight is to stay sober and keep one's mouth shut. Yeah, that's probably the best way to go uh, for anything in life, probably. Stay sober and keep your mouth shut. Uh, that doesn't mean you're not listening. That doesn't mean you're not forming an opinion or forming a strategy. It just means you're not going off at the mouth. And uh, my, my dad always said, like, people don't have a right to your thoughts. So keep them to yourself until it's useful to reveal them. And I like that. Uh, next favorite comment was from Booby G. He said, man, I love that you have the Moro blades on the wall. Always been my favorite from a historical standpoint and just extremely effective designs. Um, I couldn't agree with you more, obviously, Booby G. Uh, they are beautiful, kind of uh, um, exo very exotic looking and uh, yeah, just brutally effective uh, blades and also, I'm, I'm a big variety is the spice of life kind of guy. And um, if you want variety in blade and handle design, take a look at the Filipino uh, blades because it's a huge, huge spectrum. All right. Well, that being said, let us get to a pocket check. Today in my front right pocket in the main position, I had the Microtech SOCOM Elite Auto. This one given to me, not given. This was a, a trade uh, with Dave. This old sword blade reviews, and uh, he had exactly what I wanted when I was trying when I was uh, trying to get this knife and uh, put up a Manticore, my my beloved Manticore, up for uh, uh, up for trade. But you know what they say: without sacrifice, uh, you can't get to that next level. And this is what I really wanted. So. Um, I was grateful at the time that Dave had this very knife and uh, I love the Microtechs. You know, right now I'm in a huge Microtech phase. I've been carrying uh, the LUDT Gen 2, the, the one the last one on the market that I scored uh, that I could find anyway. Purple anodized. I've been carrying that thing nonstop. I've been talking about how I'm not as fond as the Gen uh, of the Gen 3 design, uh, but no doubt if you like that design, it will be an am amazing and very, very stout, useful, sturdy, and um, reliable knife for, for many, many, many years. Uh, in my bouncing around pocket, uh, not in any sort of slip, I had the Rosecraft Okoe Kayak, and I love this knife. Uh, like a canoe, it's got a sort of symmetrical handle that uh, looks a bit like a canoe or a kayak in this case. And also like a canoe knife, it's got a blade that is canted sort of downward in the handle. If you open up a, a case canoe, for instance, you'll see when you open up the blades that they they come at a, a little bit of an angle, which aids in the cutting and um, also has an interesting look. Well, that's one of the things I love about this knife the most is that sort of odd downward angle. You don't see it too much on too many knives. Uh, but um, uh, Andy Armstrong, designer of this knife and designer uh, for a long time uh, with or uh, with um, Rough Rider, excuse me, uh, has experimented a lot with different uh, traditional patterns and push, push them to interesting places. So I, I love this sort of bellied worn cliff or sheep's foot or this is like a, a bellied sheep's foot on a canoe style frame. Anyway, uh, whatever it is, it's beautiful. I love the red covers on this. Um, I like their bone covers a lot. Uh, there's a knife we're going to be talking about in Knife Life News that I'm very much looking forward to getting, uh, but it's sold out. It's their latest one. Lots of people have videos up, but I'm still going to talk about it because it's cool. All right, next up is uh, in my belt, in my uh, waistline at the three o'clock position was the Nova 2. 
this is designed by me and uh and matt chase of hogtooth knives and made expertly by hand by uh, matt chase just an awesome knife this is a riff on the um nova one bowie which was a riff on on his on matt's edc tanto so just a great line uh it's the size the handle the ergonomics and then with this nova series we're just switching out blades uh, of my design and he nailed it with this one he said honestly i wasn't crazy about the kiridashi shape until i made it and saw how wicked it is and how effective it is uh, both in a in, in a pushing manner and also in a pull cut and uh, you know utility cutting manner uh, it's hollow ground wickedly sharp i've been carrying it for about two weeks now and uh in in not this coming week but uh next week we will well yeah next week is this coming week we'll be announcing the pre-order for this we got a lot of uh, got a lot on our plate right now and and i'm i'm zeroing in on all the details and we have a lot of back end stuff to do so uh and also any sort of changes that we're going to make which are very scant if any actually i really honestly have uh, just the sheath for me is going to change the sheath color and and uh the bottom contour here I wanted to round out a little bit more uh, just to be comfortable on the on the softness <laughs> uh, when you put it in the waistband. So uh, color, it'll be a darker charcoal. Uh, we're going to go with this ivory G10 and red. Not only does it evoke sort of a Japanese feel to me, um, but it also evokes a sort of Nordic feel, as does the blade. It's not a straight up Kiridashi. To me, it's also kind of sax like. Um, and the handle to me reminds me of whalebone. So uh, just a, um, I'm very excited about this new Nova and uh, can't wait to release it to the wider world. Okay, last up for emotional support, I had the, oh, I love this knife, the inversion, the ringed inversion by the great and powerful Dirk Pinkerton. Look at that beautiful uh, orange peel texture on the titanium gorgeous uh, pickle style blade you've got the ring here which is perfect you know not all rings are are created equal and this ring is perfect because it is jutting out from the handle so it does not disrupt your fist in any way it just it just seamlessly oh that's an old corporate word I, i'm going to expunge that from my vocabulary it perfectly fits the grip without uh, forcing you to alter your fist at all um so a very very useful and good ring not all rings are useful and good uh <clears throat> it's a frame lock and it has this um uh copper uh, sort of wave feature it also came with a uh disc a thumb disc which i haven't put on there yet but i have the thumb disc on my kaiser version of the inversion so uh my bases are covered this is what i had on me what did you have on you today please drop it in the comments below i'd love to find out uh what you have to me it is inspiration uh, whether or not i actually uh seek out that knife because i'd have them all i'd have all of the knives and then and then get rid of the ones i don't want that would be more practical if i could uh, so let me know what you got. Uh, coming up, we have a really special uh, giveaway. Thursday Night Knives. Um, excuse me. We're going to be giving away. And uh, Chaz Fisher of Fisher Blades will be giving away the giveaway. And this is what he's going to be giving away. The package looks like this here. Since the knife itself is wrapped up, I'm not going to wrapped up very classily in a um, paper thing with a with a I voted sticker. <laughs> That's what it looks like to me. Uh, but it's this knife, the Beckwith Covert. I've been talking about it. You've seen videos uh, from various people online about this knife. It's really awesome. It's a pocket fixed blade Tonto um, that uh, is really a self-defense weapon. That's the primary um uh, what's the word? Uh, raison d'etre for this is self-defense. Uh, very adamantly, very stubbornly a self-defense knife. And and you know that I love that. I super, 
super love and appreciate that. But I just want to say to those of you out there who are not into that, not into carrying knives as a weapon, this actually makes an outstanding EDC. I know Chaz bristles at the at the uh, at the term and the thought, but this does make an excellent everyday carry just utility knife. I gotta say. Upping the light on there. There we go. All that black uh, on the coating absorbs the light. Beautiful red liners. Excellent uh, handle and ergonomics. You got that quillion there on the pommel for drawing. Great place to put your thumb in reverse grip. And then uh, presents the edge in an excellent uh, manner in forward uh, grip there. So this is what we're going to be giving away. Chaz will be joining us. Um, giving away the knife, and then in the package comes some beef jerky. Uh, I think he's on the carnivore diet. He's a, a martial artist, super fit, veiny sort of forearm guy who crushes your crushes your hand when he shakes it, not on purpose because he's a jerk, but because he's, uh, he's on the carnivore diet. I think that's cool. Uh, but there you go right there. It gives you some beef jerky. That's my snack of choice at work. Back with covert manual by the way this shows you all the places you need to put the covert if you're going to use it in a defensive way how to carry it where to stick it pretty cool pretty old school you know uh uh colonel beckwith was the guy who started delta force and he was no uh shrinking violet let's say the constitution and uh it's AEBL, 60 to 62 Rockwell hardness, and you get a little birth card here, sticker, and a Band-Aid. Uh, hopefully, you don't cut yourself, and if you do, you can never get rid of it. It is yours. It owns you. All right, that is what we're going to be giving away on Thursday Night Knives. <clears throat> Very much looking forward to that. Uh, I will give an announcement. I have not actually settled on the date uh, with... Um, with Chaz, but he's going to be on the podcast soon. So I think we're doing it right after that. So uh, I will let you know about that, but I'm very excited to be giving uh, one of these things away. By the way, if I didn't mention pocket sheath, um, you don't want to wear this in the waistband, but pocket sheath, it's a great, it's a great carry, uh, whether forward or back. I have the left hand and the right hand sheath. So far, I've only used the right hand sheath and it, it goes great all the way around in all four pockets. So very much looking forward to that. Okay, still to come on the Knife Junkie podcast, Knife Life News. But before we get there, be, be sure to subscribe here. Hit the notification bell. Like it. If you've been this long, uh, you're either seething with anger or you, you like the show. So hit the like button. And uh, we are just over 30,000 subscribers, which is exciting. We're in the 31,000 area now or just beyond that. And <clears throat> coming up is our 500th episode of the Knife Junkie podcast. That does not include Thursday Night Knives. That does not include shorts or any other sort of video, just this show and the interview show. So um, we're going to celebrate that. Very exciting. All right. Uh, still to come, check out Knife Life News. Among this week's specials at Knives Ship Free, the Bark River Kalahari Mini Sportsman combines the ergonomics of the Kalahari series with a slender filleting blade. The CPM 154 stainless steel balances performance and easy maintenance, and we have a great selection of handle options in stock. The Spyderco Micro Jimbo just arrived in blackout finish. The blade is 2.45 inches of CPM S30V with a black DLC coating. All handle hardware matches the blackout theme, including the reversible deep pocket wire clip and stainless steel liners. And the RMJ Tactical Ratatosk is a contemporary bolo design from Reed Carmack, RMJ's in-house blacksmith. The 5.5-inch Nitro V stainless blade has a black Cerakote finish, and each comes with bronze and blue anodized hardware sets. Get these deals and other great specials from Knives Ship Free. Just use our affiliate link, thenifejunkie.com slash free. Support the show and get a great new knife at the same time, thenifejunkie.com slash free. You're listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. The Elementum is to Zavivi what the Burnley Quaken is to Boker. So endless reiteration in different uh, 
relevant and sometimes not so relevant forms. Um, but that's something that I love hate about both the uh, the Berker, uh, the Boker Burnley Quake and, and the Elementum. I mostly just like to riff on how they endlessly riff on those knives. The Civivi Elementum, I got to say, I love that knife. I got one for my wife with the ebony handles. And uh, man, it's it's definitely one of my favorites uh, from Civivi. They have a new one. And this one's pretty cool. This would be a massive flex if you work in retail and you're opening boxes uh, in, in the room, in the back room, you know, where all this stuff is, the magical room where all the extra stuff is. Uh, it is the Civivi Elementum Utility. <clears throat> So as the name would belie, it is an elementum frame with a utility um, blade fixture. So you flip it open or use the thumb stud to open it. And there is a frame into which you put a utility uh, blade. So pretty cool. Um, a lot of different uh, companies have done this. And uh, but here, I don't know, this this might be the first one to tempt me into the into the uh, genre i'm not a big fan of the utility knife thing and that's only because i don't really it's not relevant in my life um i do have utility blades that i use every once in a while when i'm doing kydex or doing some house chore that i don't want to use a knife for but usually i'm scrambling to find the right knife in my collection to do those kind of chores with uh, but for those of you who have a uh, real use for uh, a tool like this and a knife collection and you like to keep that more pristine this thing is awesome aluminum handle um and uh flipper thumb stud and button lock that's not what you're not seeing in this picture but it's a button lock so it's not only super useful uh but it's super fidgety man you got the flipper you got the thumb stud and you got the button lock so um you're waiting for the truck as it's backing up to the loading dock <laughs> While all the other people are just pushing it out and sliding it back in, pushing it out, sliding it back in. You've got this and uh, anodized blue here, but it will come in a variety of colors. Uh, this will be in available. Uh, this will be available in May 2024. Keep your eyes peeled at first exciting utility uh, modification that I've seen, though. Uh, Boker has not done a quaken with a utility blade uh, fixture. Next up is Rosecraft. <clears throat> Rosecraft, which uh, I was carrying today. And actually, uh, the release of this next knife is what uh, inspired me to carry the 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 uh, Oki um, kayak today. The Rosecraft Nola Chucky Jack. This thing is cool. I've seen a lot of people uh, have it. I, I hesitated and then they sold out. So um, I will wait for the next uh the next round of this, but look at this beauty. You know, I, I ordinarily am not a huge fan of a drop point blade, but this one not only has that beautiful long pull and machine ground swedge, well, it's all machine ground, but uh, you know what I mean? Uh, has that, that, that cut swedge up front, but it also has the overall profile of a scalpel. Uh, so it's got a, uh, I don't know how you would explain it, but uh, a slight, a very subtle peak towards the tip on the spine and a quick drop down. Nice, long, straight edge and then belly at the end. It's a beauty. And and it's coming in this uh, dark green. Uh, to me, it always looks green, but they're calling it antique brown or vintage brown bone. Um, it is beautiful. And then you've got that Rosecraft uh, rosebud shield which i'm a big fan of uh, d2 blade steel as usual a little bit larger than usual that blade is three inches three inch blade there uh, which for a slip joint is on the larger side let's say uh, that's kind of uh, edc folder uh, territory uh, first run sold out but sign up at the website to find out when they drop more <clears throat> okay next is from Boker. And uh, this is them uh, blending old with the new. This is the Boker uh, Modern Trapper Uno is what they're calling it. Uh, the Boker Modern Trapper Uno um, is the second in this sort of uh, modern rehashing of uh, older patterns, slip joint patterns. They did that with the Barlow now they're onto the trapper. And I think that this is a really uh, nice looking knife. You look at the handle, that is definitely, that is a trapper handle. Uh, here you have bolsters, you have a canvas micarta. 
Um, but I, I like this traditional format, but with the with the new with the modern uh, trappings. Oh, trappings, if you will. Uh, the the lock, the uh, flipper tab, the three point two three inch nitro V blade. They're calling it a drop point. I mean, I'm looking at that. It looks like a clip point to me. Um, but that's they should know they made it uh really nice uh, uh deep carry pocket clip but not reversible 2.4 ounces so pretty light and coming soon this to me is a uh a, a rugged looking gentleman's folder this is like this is for the gentleman outdoorsman uh so maybe this is something in the pocket of a guy who's got one of those big heavy jackets uh with the with the collar up and the and the and the suede patches and he's got a shotgun over his, uh, you know, broken in half over his um, arm. You know what I mean? Not broken in half, but uh, opened up a double barrel. And this is the blade in his pocket. It's kind of got country gentleman written all over it. But but modern country gentleman who likes uh, modern steel. So I, I like this knife. I think it looks pretty good. Uh, so that's from Boker. And then lastly, uh, from James Brand, uh, they're expanding their EDC lineup with a new driver. Um, it's funny. Um, ben Schwartz uh, of Knife News basically says some people are excited about their knife as a tool. Some people are excited about their tools that take care of their tools. Other people don't care. But for those of you who do, there's a new driver. And by driver, I mean, you know, um, screwdriver, basically a uh, bit driver. Uh, this one is for lanyard or keychain carry. And uh, as all James brand things, it has, it's very designy. I don't know how else to put it, but like it has a very, um, like a lot of attention, uh, spent to the design of it, how efficiently it carries these bits, how, uh, how like beautifully it does it. And it's a beautiful little device. Uh, it is the size of an old Wrigley's five, um, five stick chewing gum packet. So it's small. And uh, it comes with what are mostly used out there in the wider world outside the, the knife community. So it comes with a couple of Phillips and a couple of slotted uh, screw bits. But of course, you can put your your uh, your bits in there. This is a, a I don't want to say collaboration with, but this is those are WIA bits. This is to hold WIA uh, bits, and that is uh, a German company that makes the best bits. We all know WIA. Uh, that's probably what once you, once you upgrade your toolkit for taking your knives apart, that's where you end up because you do your research and you look and everyone says get the Weha bits, and that's because they're they're German and uh, they they are hardened, you know, unlike cheap bits that will just kind of get marred under pressure. They're hardened. They're great bits. So. Well, that's a pretty cool little thing. And I got to say, I like the internal blue area. Makes it easy to see everything. Everything pops with that as the background. Uh, we do have an affiliate link, uh, the James Brand. So the knifejunkie.com slash James Brand. <clears throat> so you can check that out. Uh, but uh, new addition to their EDC lineup. To me, this, this would be a good, this would go well with that little tiny record opening Kiridashi. Remember that record album, you know, vinyl record album uh, opening Kiridashi they came up with. I think that's a, that was a cool tool. This is a cool tool. And uh, James Brand, though I like to pretend that they're not cool because they're hipster uh, design, designy people, they really do cool stuff. So check this one out. All right. Next up, uh, we're going to, Take a look at an oldie but a goodie uh, to set us up for the main topic of uh, conversation here. Uh, but before we do, be sure to uh, check us out on Patreon. Quickest way to do that is go to the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon. When you do, you can uh, examine the three different levels of support we offer and the things you get in return for your generosity. Really, all of those things are mere tokens of our appreciation. Um so I thank you one and all who go check it out and definitely thank you those who take advantage over there. All right, coming up, the state of the collection. The Shockwave Tactical Torch is your ultimate self-defense companion, featuring a powerful LED bulb that lasts 100,000 hours, a super sharp crenulated bezel, and built-in stun gun delivering 4.5 million volts. Don't settle for ordinary. Choose the Shockwave Tactical Torch, thenifejunkie.com shockwave.
And now that we're caught up with Knife Life news, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. So in a moment, we're going to be talking all about Pickhall knives <clears throat> and perusing uh, so, some great examples of them. And the reason we're doing that is because I have two in-house that I have to send overseas uh, to their rightful owner. Uh, but they're both beautiful and rep great representations, uh, representatives of the form. And uh, I have some others I added to this. But before I get to that, I want to talk about this unique knife uh, that is on a long-term loan before I give it away from Dave, this old sword. Uh, and it, it is the Topps Backbite. And it one might think it's a Pakal knife on first uh, blush. When you, when you hold it, it looks like this. It's a very unique, uh, odd-looking knife. It's designed by a gentleman named Colin Despins. And it is not so much a Pakal style knife as it is a knife um, that is optimized for a certain style of Russian martial art that does what's called, uh, that practices something, I'm going to go to the main camera here, called locomotion striking. So not only are they, are they getting action on the strike out, but they're getting action on the the retraction from the strike and so you add this knife this backbite knife a lot of people wonder uh, why the blade is shaped like that and even how you hold it it's intended to be held like this with that curve forward that curve gets sharp uh, towards the apex here and it's intended to uh, be a mechanical uh, pressure additive <laughs> when you strike with it so you're hitting with your fist and you're and your and you're basically punching through your target and and nailing them with that hooked portion and then on the return you have this worn cliff style uh edge here to get uh, mechanical pressure on the retraction mechanical pressure is a very clinical way of saying uh you're really you're you're tearing backward as you retract that punch so a little bit different from the pical uh main usage of the pical style knife but uh I find it really a fascinating uh, blade to look at and and I haven't used it. I haven't carried it. Uh, you could turn it around and use it in, in such a manner uh, where you're using the Warncliffe as a sort of splitting um, percussive cut, uh, which is just nasty. Because look at that oblique. Look at how... Uh, Look at how steep the angle is to the edge. And then it's got a little relief edge on the bottom. So it's going to cut, it's going to tear and gouge, uh, but it's definitely not a slicer. A, a, a crazy implement from Topps Knives and Colin Despins, um, this, this backbite. But I'd say not quite a Pical knife. You could do the Pical stuff with it, uh, but intimidating, weird implement of chaos uh, from Topps. So it comes in that cool sheath and it has one of these clips. I think they still offer it with that clip because this is a, an older school uh, tops. Okay, so that leads me into Pakal knives. Tip down, edge in. We've talked about it a lot on this show, but I've never cataloged the ones that I have. And I figured having these uh, these two here from Jock's Knife uh, would, would be a, a great opportunity before I send them along to do a, a catalog like this. Okay, so first I wanna talk about the one that inspired it all. Now, uh, the fruit knife, the curved bladed fruit knife is what inspired the big call craze. That and, 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 and that coming through Ed Calderon of Ed's Manifesto, the quick and dirty of that is his mother carried around a fruit knife, a curved edge uh, fruit knife with her all the time. and once defended the family from some thugs with it and it left an impression on Ed Calderon and he went into uh, law enforcement on the border, drug interdic interdiction on the Mexican side and found the value in, ca in carrying a fruit knife. So this first one here is my version of that knife um, and it's a Victorinox fruit knife, easily gotten on uh, Amazon. And what I've done here is uh, per his recommendation, let me let this fine focus, is heat up the handle, which is just a 
you know, plastic handle and bend it. So I used a, a heat gun, but you can use a toaster oven or something like that and bend the handle. And I recommend you wear gloves and you hold it as it cools. Otherwise, it will spring back into into its original shape. So heat it up until it's uh, malleable. The tang comes about halfway, so beware. Um, you don't want that popping out the back. But uh, bend it gently and let it cool in your hands with the with leather gloves or some sort of glove, and then you'll have it in that sort of shape. Now, the reason you want it in that shape is so that when you have it in reverse grip, the point is presented at such an angle that when you when you use a simple hammer fist strike forward, the point is presented uh, where it needs to be, as opposed to uh, hooking and pointing downward and and kind of hitting your opponent or whatever the threat with that back curved portion of the blade so you you angle the handle you don't necessarily have to do that but it 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 i i think it makes it more um you can use it in more ways so you can bend that handle and then here i've wrapped it in two different kinds of cord first uh a 220 uh 225 cord <laughs> sorry i had to i had to do the math 550 and a half i know uh and that's so that's 225 cord wrapped around and then over that is some jute cord which i love i also love the the texture but i also i like the way it looks put a little bit of shellac on it you know golden shellac and then light it on fire <laughs> and it, and uh it gives you a great texture and it it dulls down and you know, gives you a great look great great texture it also uh, pulls all of the spare fibers that come off the jute cord and uh, turn it into a, a a single handle without all the frayed stuff. So it's very, very super light. And then you can make a sheath. I made mine mine out of Kydex, but you can use. Uh, I've seen a I've seen videos where people use a simple uh, water bottle and cut out some of the plastic and then and then use a lighter to heat it to wrap around the i mean that's real uh i like that that's like survival level uh knife making oh by the way cut a little notch here on the for the forefinger so when it's in your hand you have it's a way to index it and know exactly what you're dealing with and then here i made a sheath uh that easily pops off with that little hook you can just drop it in the pocket and as you draw it from the pocket this hooks on the inside of the pocket and you come out with the knife in hand here i have velcro because this uh this actually lives in my car i got some schmutz there lives in my car and this can stick easily to the fuzzy side of my seat i also have a piece of velcro inside the uh, center console that i can stick this to and every once in a while um you know i live near dc and every once in a while if i have to drive down there I'll just kind of have this. I make sure I have my phone in my pocket in case I get torn out of my car, you know, phone and wallet in my pocket. And then I have this on the seat just in case, I don't know, someone reaches in and I have a hammer in the door. I can trap their hand with the claw of the hammer. And if I need to use this, uh, of course, that's all just uh, uh, planning, uh, hoping for the, what do they say? Hoping for the best, planning for the worst. Uh, but here it is. Uh, this is the one that's basically started it all for me i will have you know if you're looking to buy a victorinox <clears throat> fruit knife like this they do come in two different sizes this is the smaller size i prefer the smaller size i have a larger one that i've given away um or had a larger one that i gave away i think i would always go for the smaller one just because it's thinner more discreet and that's oftentimes why you want one of these like that handle would print through the pocket uh, because I've wrapped it and made it thicker, but this isn't really intended for that pocket carry. All right, so <clears throat> building on that pedigree, basically, uh, Copus Designs uh, teamed up with Ed Calderon to make a more, well, uh, purpose-driven version of the fruit knife, and that purpose is self-defense. Uh, so this is my Copus Designs Elvia. I have to be careful drawing it out. A great sheath here. You can see the, the hook. That's what inspired the hook on my sheath before I had this. Uh, this one, I have the ulti clip on. And here it is. 154 cm, very thin blade steel and an injection molded handle. Uh, I had um, Josh Mason of Bright for War Knives wrap mine with 
uh, purple ray skin and sukamaki wrap. So you can see those alternating peaks and valleys make for an outstanding grip. Uh, I really, this is a great knife, uh, especially with that grip. Uh, but again, with that grip, it's very, it's a lot less uh, drop in the pocket just to hide and stash. Um, but this one I wear in the waistband, it works out fine. Uh, but so here's one of the ones on loan to me from Jock's Knife I'm about to send over. This is another Copus Designs uh, Elvia, but this one has the cutout on the back. And I got to say, it's the very same knife. I thought it was thinner and all this. It's it's the exact same knife, just with uh, with a scoop taken out there. And both are cool. But I got to say, this is just looks wicked. It looks wicked. It does look like a talon or a beak of a raptor or something. It's just got a real wicked look with that with that divot cut out in the back. Uh, but it makes for a great thumb swale when using this in utility tasks, which is definitely what you're going to be using this for most, but not just utility tasks. If you're using this in a defensive slashing uh, motion, it really does give you a great place uh, for thumb purchase there. Uh, these are exclusives at Knives Ship Free. Sometimes you see the ads here. You saw one here before. Um, not sure if they're in stock currently. Last week they were. So you can go check those out. A great, great Pakal option. They're wickedly sharp. And as you can see, they don't have very, uh, well, they have very thin stock. So uh, the bevel, the edge bevel is very thin. And then the relief cutting edge is even thinner. So great for its intended purpose uh you say what's the intended purpose why the tip down and the edge in uh just a it's because it takes advantage of your caveman motions the things you're going to do in a real pinch when you're flooded with adrenaline and just trying to stop someone from from doing you in and it takes advantage that tip down and that curved edge in takes advantage of the arcing motions of your wrist, your elbow, your shoulder, uh, when you're doing that kind of hammer fist motion. And of course, there's Libra fighting where they've codified all of this and turned it into an, uh, a real, um, oh, a, an excellent defensive system. Um, it's not just caveman, uh, 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 but a lot of it is. And uh, because that's what you go back to, apparently, when you're in that state. Uh, thank God I haven't been in that state. This is a wood desk, and uh, I'd like to like to remain that way. But if so, it's nice to have something in your hand like this, which isn't going to fail and uh, is going to take advantage of what your body is doing, what you're making your body do, but also what your body's doing. All right, next up from TKL Knives is the MR1. This one is a variation on the Night Stalker. The Night Stalker is the most popular knife of all time from TKL Knives. And this is basically the same knife, just sharpened on the reverse side. So very, very same knife. If you hold them up next to each other, they're identical. It's just instead of the bevel here, the bevel is there. And this was a request from a Marine unit. I guess it's Marine, Marine Raiders 1 in San Diego. Let's see. There we go. They wanted something uh, small with a ring that would work great in very close in environments. Uh, this apparently I've, I've heard this a lot, not, not only from just people randomly on the Internet, but also from acquaintances and friends uh, who know people who in clearing houses and rooms um, can get bogged down and very close in and they need their knives and so something like this that you can index and access with that finger ring and pull out and know it's in your hand and this also works this ring is adequate for you know gloves works with gloves and you'll you'll have this gripped in your hand and the way that your body is going to naturally pull will take advantage of this uh, backward facing edge cool thing about these TKL knives is let's see if we can get close enough there we go you can see the striations on the on the edge of this one on the edge bevel of this one and the nickel boron coating which is a material used in guns to to make metal slick 
coated on these uh, does make it slick it, to the to the touch. Um, not not oily, not like you pull it off and you can feel it on your fingers, but it just it gives it a glide. And I think that's perfect for a knife like this. You want it to glide through whatever you're you're going through. Uh, the ring in this case, again, like the um, like the Dirk Pinkerton ring, uh, you can have a full, perfect, natural fist, perfect, a, a full, natural fist with that ring. And it really, really aids in drawing it quickly. And in my case, I have it forward on the front near the belt buckle, scout style. Um, and the width of that sheath and the way he makes those sheaths really is perfect. It hides. It doesn't hide, but it, it fits the contour of the belt perfectly. So you don't have anything running over top or bottom if you have an inch and a half belt and it's good to go. So that's the MR1 from TKL Knives. Now, speaking of Dirk Pinkerton, here are my Dirk Pinkerton Pical Knives. Um, well, one of them is a fixed blade, and I'll show you that in a minute. But here are the inversions. Now, the inversion is a knife that first came out through Kaiser. Uh, and here it is. The Kaiser inversion came with two different thumb studs. One one that was more of a flat um, thumb plate or thumb disc. And then this one, which cants up and over the sides of the blade and allows you to wave it out. It's an odd looking knife. I remember when I first saw it, I was like, right, the handle, the knife's in, the blade's in backwards. Um, and if you flipped it around, it would look totally natural. And it would look like a uh, Dirk Pinkerton knife. Uh, but uh, the handle looks like it's backwards. That's because it's meant to be. It's meant to be used like this with the tip down and the edge in. And you have the you have the clip. You can swap it either side. So when you draw it and it waves out, tra oops, drops right into position, right into your hand. So let me do that again. So you're looking down at your pocket, your right pocket, and the pocket clip's coming out. You draw it. It waves open, lands right in your hand or Pical usage. So uh, something I like about this S35 VN, uh, reverse Tonto, reverse curved Tonto, reverse, uh, okay, whatever. It's, it's a, you know what it is? It's a, it's a recurve lamb's foot, <laughs> if we're gonna be a dork about it. And then the terraced uh, frame lock, titanium frame lock, it's, it's really kind of a dressy knife, but with that texturing, that terracing, if, really stays in hand well and uh with that tip down edge in pical style blade it's ready for action it's definitely a james bond knife that tip and that that uh peak there was something that he changed when he when dirk decided to make the inversion under his own shingle uh, kaiser discontinued the inversion uh but dirk didn't and so he continued onward and this was a prototype uh, for what, for where we landed, for where he landed. And I'm one of the lucky ones who got this. I know um, Dave got one. I know Fieldworks got one, um, and a number of of other folks. I think uh, Tomas got one. But just really cool, forest green G10 contour, not contoured, but heavily chamfered with a liner lock, a thin liner lock on this. Uh, but you have that same flipper action, and then you have the waveable tab here on the back of the blade. So that when you draw this thing out, it's in it's in your grip already for action, and uh, you can defend yourself with it. But you'll you'll notice how the blade has changed uh, through <clears throat> my own input and then the input of the others I just mentioned and and others. Uh, oh, and and some like, uh, Maybe even your input, because I think he did uh, some Instagram polls and stuff, changing the blade shape to that more talon-like shape, that more bird's beak shape, softening out this peak and that ridge and making it uh, a more gently curved, sort of recurved Warncliffe now. And uh, yeah, it goes into material much better. Uh, people like Fieldworks uh, ha have tested it out. I have not, but... Uh, going into medium like that really makes a difference having that smooth and a little bit thinner blade stock and that 
lack of that peak there goes into material better. So it's a better stabber, we're going to say. And then this is the final product. And this titanium S35 VN version is, it is amazing. And uh, a number of us got this. He put out a uh, pre-order and I jumped on it and was very happy to, when it came out, you know, this is one of those things where I did the pre-order and then a long, I kind of forgot about it. And then suddenly they're ready. And I was like, oh yeah, that's right. Uh, and that was, that was cool. Haven't always been able to do that. I like the deep carry pocket clip. And this one also came with a black blade. So folding Pakal, I think it's a great idea. Not only, not only for the size and the dis discretion of it, but when you're using it in its intended way, I'm going to go to the main camera here. When you're doing this in, in its intended way, using it this way, all of the pressure is going against the stop pin. And that's how it should be. But but you would think in something that, that takes so much uh, physical force as this kind of motion, um, you'd want to make sure that it's going against this, the stop pin. So though it's a weird looking design and it takes your eyes a minute to get used to, it is a uh, one of the one of the safer kind of tactical ways to have a fixed blade. Um, even, you know, I mean, to have a folding blade. All right. Next up is from Turner CNC. This is the other one on loan from Jock, and this is headed out now. Uh, not now, obviously. Uh, Turner CNC Elvia V2. This is a bigger one uh, than the first one I showed off, also Jock's. And it comes in this incredible uh, ambidextrous ambidextrous sheath. You can resheath this thing either way. It looks like a dagger sheath, but look at what goes in there. Look at this nasty, gnarly beautiful knife this is magna cut and it as is evidenced by that m below the turner cnc uh, logo there's that m just a beautiful beautiful blade root knife style blade you got the finger divot you've got the curve tip down edge in uh tip uh, angled outward a little bit beautifully um what is that called? That G10 is really nice. What's that patterning called? Not knurling, but it looks like the deck of a ship or something. And then you've got two big screws that unscrew with pennies, perfectly fit uh, to pennies. And then in there, there's a small space where you could put something if you wanted. Um, but I just love the finish of it. It's so incredibly sharp. And uh, I'm glad to have this one uh, in-house just to check out i mean i'm looking at this thing and uh it is substantially larger fr from the last turner uh cnc elvia also a collaboration with that ed calderon uh but this one whew, i would hate to see someone wielding this um but let's take a, a quick look at that finish that magna cut heat treat finish is just so cool all right so that's the Elvia and the sheath here has a Tracker Dan clip. Tracker Dan, been trying to get him on the show for a long time. Um, he's like, yeah, yeah, I'd love to. Yeah. And then next up is the Draug from Rib Splitter. We were just talking with Rib Splitter. He was just on the uh, on the show. I love this knife. And he's every Sunday. He's he's dropping really sweet. Um, Pakal style knives, but other knives too. He's got some nice fighters, some utilities. He just did his first, what was it? Some sort of uh, um, Nordic utility style knife, not a Puko. Can't remember what it was, but this is just uh, all Pakal all day long. I mean, you look at it, it looks like an S almost or a lightning bolt. Very nicely contoured handle. It gives you a great place to put your thumb on top, which is hugely important. Uh, since this is a sort of percussive downward strike, you could easily slip onto the blade if you don't have uh, a good traction plan or a way to cap the thumb. And um, this, of course, also helps stops you from coming down, but your palm could really engage if you didn't have a way to stop. So really excellent ergonomics. And then he does this um, corrosive effect on the steel, which I think is pretty cool looking. I think it's 50... 52100. I, no, I, I don't remember. 
rib splitter knives. You should check them out if you're interested in Pakal knives and want to get into customs because uh, he makes them and they're really excellent and they're reasonable. Uh, they're, they are a great way to get into uh, custom fixed blade knives, definitely. And you can support a cool dude. All right. Next up, speaking of cool dudes, JB Knife and Tool. This is the ditch pick. This is the double-edged ditch pick. So if it's double-edged, is it Pakal? Well, I say yes. I say it's a double-edged Pakal. Ancient alien theorists say yes. All right. If you're a dork, you know what that means. Uh, so very, very thin, 1 16th inch steel uh, flexible that's 1095 the way they uh temper and heat treat this steel it is very flexible they test it for that but they also test it for um so that's toughness but they also test it for edge holding and um piercing so though it is very thin it is a really effective uh knife for this kind of call style uh, when they released this one i think this was the first time they offered a forward edge I could be wrong about that, uh, but I opted for that. They also offer a half forward edge, which uh, though is a little less edge than I would prefer, um, it looks cool. <laughs> and if you're someone like me who's shallow and really only care about superficial things, um, a knife looking cool is is says a lot. But I had to go full edge. I'm like, why would I have half of the edge? You know, there might be that situation where I'm like, oh, if only I had sharpened that, had the whole edge sharpened. Of course, that's all that's all just story, story making in my mind. But uh to be real, this is an excellent self-defense uh tool and fits great uh for me up front in uh, on a tilt like this in appendix, in the waistband appendix. Now, this sheath or this blade is so sharp that I once uh, was resheathing it really fast and actually stabbed through the kydex. So I put another little piece of kydex and melted it on the end there. It looks like it looks like one of the one of those muscles it looks like the muscle on a um, scallop to me, actually. All right. Got the discrete carry concepts clip on there and really excellent peel ply handle on that on the uh, textured handle. Next up from Bastinelli, uh, this is a custom uh, anomaly, tip down uh, anomaly. I said diagnostic. I'm an idiot. Sorry, Jim. I gave him the wrong information, so he put up the wrong information. This is the anomaly. Uh, the diagnostic I, le I lost at Universal Studios a couple of years ago. Uh, a four knife collection from Doug Markaida and Bastian of bastinelli knives and uh, they all had the same handle this ringed handle uh, but they had four different blade styles and this one that pakal style obviously was calling to me so i got this and i ordered it from from bastinelli so i could get the cord wrap he does a great cord wrap and i love the maroon he had featured this uh right before i ordered it from him this might be the one he featured in his videos i'm not sure uh, but I loved that maroon cord wrap, so I went for it, and it feels great in hand. Another excellently placed ring. Uh, this one uh, has a little bit more um, angle for this kind of manipulation kind of stuff that I'm not going to try and do under the camera, but where you're flipping it around and here, that's what I mean, stopping it and making, extending the knife and doing slashes like this, which... I don't know. I can't say I recommend. I guess uh, if you're really good and you know you're only going to hit the tip and and you're you got some soft fleshy target, maybe. Um, but there's a difference between self-preservation and self-perfection. And a lot of the techniques that you'll see people practice with ringed knives, those are self-perfection techniques. Those are techniques that uh, work on your attributes, your speed, your timing, your distance, that kind of thing. But that's not what you're going to do in an actual fight. So uh, like when you see Tomas, he's amazing. Tomas Alas of Tactical Tag. He's amazing with the flipping of the karambits and stuff. But I know that if he ever needed to use that karambit defensively, he wouldn't be doing all that stuff. Uh, so don't don't confuse those things and don't come down on people when they get all fancy. Say, oh, that, that wouldn't that's not you wouldn't do that in a fight. That's not the point. Um, 
Anyway, I don't know why I went off on that, but I do know that uh, Bastian Co uh, Bastian is always showing off uh, these things in use in his shop, and he's very good, uh, very good knife fighter, martial artist type. And he'll take this and and in that uh, grip like this, swipe it against um, you know a piece of webbing this wide or a or a giant rope and hack it with these. So very sharp, um, manufactured by Fox Knives. Um, Though this one, you know, I, he does make ones himself custom, uh, but this one is manufactured by Fox. Very cool knife. Uh, if you're interested in that series, there's a spade shaped blade, there's a karambit, and then there's a fourth one. I don't remember what that is. All right. Second to last here in this list. This is another question of if it's double edged, is it a call? And I say yes. And that is the Pinkerton cave bear this is a custom handmade pinkerton knife you know dirk pinkerton he's got a huge uh, i'm going to come over here to the main camera for a second he's got a huge catalog of knives that he has designed and had made by uh, very respected manufacturers and companies uh, most of those being folders most of them uh, but he also makes custom blades and here is and, and by the way he's a master grinder i mean his his grinding is amazing his handmade knives are incredible i have a uh, uh, four of them this one i saw across a crowded room at blade show 2021 and man i was just racing to get there i thought someone else would would grab it that menacing double-edged pical style blade uh you could also look at this and and say it looks kind of persian or middle eastern um but that double-edged Pakal style blade in that black coating, so beautiful. That's a Nitro V and his really cool logo in there, his really cool maker's mark. But all of that contrasted against this happy uh, yellow and red micarta. I just, I, something about this knife is so attractive to me. It's it, it, it is that contrast, the menace and the almost Ronald McDonald handle. Or, or the beautiful sunset handle. If I'm, oil, if I oil it, you know, it's just got a real interesting look. But in hand, oh my gosh! I mean, this knife—that's uh, about a four and a quarter inch blade, wickedly sharp. This is a knife that, if you ever had to uh, rely on a knife for survival, uh, fighting a bobcat or a lion, I don't know, something. This would be great because it fits in your hand so well. And you cap the thumb there, and the the blade is just nasty. Cave bear, I guess that's why he calls it the cave bear. It's like a giant claw, uh, but you can you can get them coming and going. I'd like to get another one. I don't know why, but I'd like to get another one. Maybe with serrations on one side. I've been seeing uh, like the um, Station Nine knives have serrations on the back straight edge on the front i love it and by the way though this is a pical um you could definitely there's jimping there you could definitely use it in a forward grip like this uh to great effect you could even use it in a forward grip like this and have sort of a gununting but weird weird uh presentation of the tip all right lastly from emerson the emerson elvia uh another uh, collaboration. This is the third on this table with Ed Calderon. And um, he used to carry a Emerson and Emerson Persian, a great knife. I've always wanted a Persian. It's a waveless design, as you can imagine, a Persian blade, beautiful handle. Um, and so at one point, he approached Ernest Emerson uh, to make a folding pickal. And this is what they came up with. And I love it. They've made a small version, which is apparently very small, and a larger version. Uh, this one to me is perfect. This is the original. Always kind of wondered why they didn't put the wave on there. It just doesn't make sense to me. I got this from Daniel Leuve. I'm not sure how to pronounce his name, but he's a uh, he was uh, rest in peace. He was an artist on Instagram who all who was getting into knives, and his work, artwork was absolutely beautiful. And he was getting into knives and was making uh, different accoutrements for them when he passed away uh, recently. And this was uh, one of them, that, that copper Elvia uh, wave. 
which really makes this knife really pushes it over the finish line as well as these vantage point blade works um contoured linen micarta scales in maroon my favorite color uh it's an emerson it's got that beefy titanium uh liner lock it's going nowhere this would be an excellent knife for its intended purpose uh but heaven forbid anyone who any one of us here who carries a pickle ever needs to use one for its intended purpose heaven forbid all right well thanks for joining me on this uh tip down edge in journey uh it's been a pleasure and uh i know i know jim has loved it too so thanks for joining us be sure to join us tomorrow night for thursday night knives and coming up on sunday it's episode 500 of the knife junkie podcast we are excited to present that to you uh, if you want to help support the show you can go to patreon knife junk knife junkie.com slash patreon all right for jim working his magic behind the switcher i'm bob demarco saying until next time don't take dull for an answer thanks for listening to the knife junkie podcast if you enjoyed the show please rate and review at review the podcast.com for show notes for today's episode additional resources and to listen to past episodes visit our website the knife junkie.com you can also watch our latest videos on youtube at the knife junkie.com slash youtube check out some great knife photos on the knife junkie.com slash instagram and join our facebook group at the knife junkie.com slash facebook and if you have a question or comment email them to bob at the knifejunkie.com or call our 24 7 listener line at 724 466 4487 and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the knife junkie podcast